Today we're going to take a quick look at how breadboards are laid out. Basically a breadboard is a tool that you can use to design electronics components. It saves you the trouble of having to solder parts together or having to twist wires together because it provides you a space where you can make electrical contact between two pieces and it's easy to troubleshoot things as well as rebuild and uh, when you're in a design phase you don't want to have uh, something permanently soldered together so a breadboard is a great way to do your designing. The way that a breadboard is laid out is there are a lot of holes where you can attach electronic components and along the top and along the bottom these holes are connected horizontally. So you can see here where the red stripe is the holes that are beside that red stripe are all connected in one long row and same thing where the blue stripe is they're all connected in one long row but not in this direction. So if I were to connect a component to a hole on this end of the board and then connect another component to a hole on the opposite end of the board those two pieces would now be connected because underneath is actually a strip of metal with little clips that can grab onto any component that you place in there. Um, the holes in the center of the board are all connected in a vertical fashion so they're in little sets of five these ones are connected these ones are connected, these ones are connected. So each set is just a little set of five uh, holes that are connected to each other vertically. And then the same thing happens down here at the bottom. But along the middle, this is called the bridge, there's no connection. Okay, so this middle section people often use to place microchips so that you can keep legs on one side and the other side separate. Uh, if you'd like to see what it looks like on the inside of the breadboard, I have my special deadboard. This is a, a breadboard where it used to be in wonderful condition but I tore the back off of it so that you can see what's happening underneath. So underneath here you can see that there are strips of metal. Now this particular one has a break in the middle so uh, there is no connection between here and here but you can see that anything that would be connected here would be connected all the way across. So these are my horizontal connections and these are my vertical connections. That's what's happening inside the board. So when you put a component into your breadboard, you need to push it into the board so that the metal will make contact with the little clips underneath here, and then that will allow you to connect components together. So a couple of the components that we're going to look at, we have an LED. LED are light-emitting diodes. So when I put current through this, it will light up. A resistor. A resistor is really important to use as a load because LEDs have a tendency to burn up if you, do, if you try to connect them directly into your circuit without having some kind of a stronger load in between. So we'll use, this L, we'll use this resistor to protect our LED from burning out. And another component that we're going to be looking at is a switch. So we'll take a look at that in a minute. But this little push button switch will allow us to also open or close a connection. And the other thing is we need to supply some power to this breadboard. So you'll notice that we have the red line and the blue line. There really isn't anything special inside the board that makes those different. Like you saw on the dead board, they're just pieces of metal. There's nothing special about either one of them that makes it power or ground. But a lot of breadboards, people draw a red line and a blue line to give you an indication so that when you're building your circuit, you can follow that standard. You can make sure you're only using the red for power the blue for ground. Usually warm colors like red, orange, red is hot, so red is power, and dark colors like blue, black, or green, those are often ground in a circuit. Now we do have some special power supplies that we're going to use in our breadboards. Um, it sh you should already have one in your breadboard, but if you don't, um, these guys plug in to the buses of your breadboard. So those outer lines are called buses. And if you looked really closely at this, you might be able to see a small plus and a minus on this circuitry. So this plus means that that is going to be power, and the minus means that's going to be ground. If you accidentally plug this in the wrong side of your board, so the plus is on ground and the minus is on power, there's a good chance that you're going to probably fry some of the circuits that you're building. So just try to make sure that you're following the standard where the plus goes to power, the minus goes to ground. So, let me zoom back out. 
this particular unit can plug actually into a USB port of your computer. And then when I press the power switch, this green light turns on. And that tells me that power is flowing. Now, if I was building a circuit, normally I would keep this off. I never turn on my circuit until I know for sure that it's built correctly because I don't want to start any kind of fires. So, I'm going to leave it off for now because I'm going to build a small circuit and then we'll turn it back on when we're ready to test it. So the first thing I want to test is just turning on an LED. So, like I said, this is going to supply power to the red bus, ground to the blue bus, and remember that to create a circuit, you have to have a complete cycle that goes all the way from power around to ground. So, I have two components that I'm going to use to build this circuit. I have my LED and I have my resistor. With an LED, it has two legs. One is long and one is short. And the short leg is always going to go to ground. The longer leg is going to go to power. So, I'm going to first attach my resistor. I'm going to go into the power bus. That's the red bus. So one leg is in the red bus. And then I'm going to bring the other leg somewhere into the board that I'm not currently using. So this is just a random area on the board, not on the buses, okay? But I want to attach it to a different location. So I've used one of these vertical buses here. And now I'm going to get to the long leg of my LED, attach that into the same line as my resistor was. So these two are in the same channel together. This one and this one underneath are connected by that strip of metal. And now the short leg of my LED, I need to put it into ground. Remember, short leg of the LED always goes towards ground. So now I have a circuit that goes from power. These two are joined by being in the same row and then back down to ground when I turn this so I'm going to zoom back out. Okay, so we've got a light turning on when I press a switch. Uh, that's just the switch for my power supply for the board, but what if I wanted to build a switch into my circuit so that I could control the lights through part of my circuitry? So the next component I want to look at is a switch. These are small push button switches. You push the button, it makes contact between the two sides of the switch. Now you'll notice there are actually four legs on this switch, which may seem confusing because usually a switch connects two pieces together. In this particular case, you actually have two separate wires. This is one wire, it comes up into the switch, goes through the switch, and comes out the other side. So this is actually one wire that goes all the way through the switch. Whatever signals on this wire it will be the same signal. And then on the other side you have another wire that goes through the switch as well. Okay, so this leg is one leg and then this leg is one leg. So, but between these two legs here there is no connection until I actually press the button. When I press the button a little plate of metal will come down and make contact in between these two pieces of metal. So that gives you a connection between this end of your circuit and that end. When I place this into my breadboard, I do so over top of the bridge. So let me take these guys out. And I'm going to place my switch over top of the bridge. So in order to connect to this, um, I'll tip this so you can see there are two legs, one here and one here. So one of these legs, I'm going to just use it to attach my resistor and power. So let's do that again. So my resistor has to go into the same leg as that switch. If it's not in the same row, then it's not connected. So this and this are in line with each other, and then the other leg of my resistor is going to go into the power bus. So here it is in the red side. Now I'll just tip that over so you can see. On this side, the other leg of my switch I'm going to use to attach my LED 
to ground. I'll tip that again so you can see it. So you can see that this leg is in the same row as this. So these two are now connected and this side is connected to ground. So now I have again my full circuit. I've got power, goes through the resistor, it will go through the switch, come through the LED and back to ground. So that when I press the switch, my light will turn on. Let's give it a shot. When I press this, press the button, the light turns on, stop pressing, it turns off. 